This video is going to talk about the idea of sampling variability. And I notice now that my Y on variability is not great, so let's just touch it up. Sampling variability is maybe one of the easier concepts to hear the first time, because it kind of makes sense. But then to put it into practice in the world of statistics takes a really long time. Uh, it's a weird idea to put it into practice. So we're going to try to really get the best understanding of it that we can in all the different ways that I can personally think of to introduce this topic to you. And then hopefully when we start putting it into practice, you'll be able to merge together the, okay, I heard it the first time and it kind of makes sense, but the implications of it are starting to make sense because we have developed the idea in so many different ways. That's at least my hope. And if this doesn't work out for you, of course, Office Hours and Piazza are a great way for us to kind of hash out the details. I think the textbook, your textbook, Modern Dive, actually does a really good job of introducing these concepts in kind of a nice, simplistic framework, much better than I think our other textbook introduces these ideas. So if you want to turn to Modern Dive sections 7.1 and 7.3, you can do 7.2 if you want, but it's a little bit extra code that I think they have made a little bit too... They tried to make it easy, and I think they went astray. I will try to give you some code as our last example here in this video that I think is much easier. It takes a little bit longer to wrap your head around, but once you get it, it really kind of captures the basic idea of what we need. So we're going to introduce sampling variability first with pictures, then with variables like letters, you probably want numbers, but letters are going to come out of it. And then in R, we'll actually see numbers in R, but the numbers are going to be kind of camouflaged behind the code. So I'll try to do the R code in steps so you can see what the structure of the numbers look like, and then you'll get out the actual numbers and data itself. So when I say with variables, you all might think I suggest numbers there, but I don't, I mean letters. Once we get into R, we'll actually see some real numbers. So here we go. The world of statistics wants to make statements about a population of interest. Let's just for now assume that this is heights of US adults. So we've got a bunch of people in our population, and I'm certainly not going to draw out 33 whatever billion US adults there are. I'm just going to draw some of these people, something like this. And our goal in statistics is to make statements about this population, even if the population is too big or too time consuming or too expensive to go actually collect all the data from. So instead, what we do is randomly sample. I'm just going to randomly sample those ones. And so this is like, you, you went out there and sampled these particular individuals. Now the idea of sampling variability is your sample, this is what I want to say, your sample captured those, I don't know, four, but hopefully larger sample size than four, those four individuals. But if I went out to sample the population, just by random chance, I probably would not get those same individuals that you got. I would get an entirely new sample, which is to say that your estimate of the population mean would be different than my estimate of the population mean because we got different individuals in our estimate, in our sample. So if you estimated from your observations the population mean of US adults height, you would get a different estimate than I would get from my sample. And in fact, if your friend went out and sampled, maybe your friend would get some of the same people you got. Friend A's sample. And maybe your friend would get different observations than you got in your sample. Sometimes they would overlap and sometimes they wouldn't. But the idea would be you would have one estimate of the population mean. 
I would have a second estimate of the population mean, and friend A would have a third estimate of the population mean, because we all probably got different observations in our samples. Maybe some of our observations overlapped, but not all of them will, purely based on chance. And now you can imagine that if we continued this down to friend N's sample, that you would have a completely different set of observations than the rest of us. And thus friend N would get many different samples from the population, giving friend N a different estimate of the population mean. The fact that these estimates, mu hats, vary by sample describes the idea of sampling variability. Sampling variability is the variation in your estimates due to sampling randomness. Okay, let's try this idea in with variables. You go out there and collect your first observation all the way up to your nth observation. And from that, you add up all your numbers and divide by m, and you get m hat 1, mu hat 1. And then me, I go out there, in our second data set, and I collect exactly m observations. And because my m observations are probably different than yours, I get a second estimate of the population mean, mu hat 2. Let's give friend numbers instead of letters. Friend 1 is going to collect their own sample of m observations. And from those m observations, friend one gets their own estimate of the population mean. Now you can imagine all the way down to friend capital R. I don't know why my indexing has to change all the time, but I think you get the idea in this big block of letters. Friend R samples capital M, just like the rest of us observations, and chances are good friend R's sample is going to contain mostly different observations than the rest of us. So friend R gets their own random sample. The fact that all of these mu hats vary is the idea that there is sampling variation. There is variation in the estimates themselves due to random sampling. Okay, if you want to think of this in like the most tangible way I can imagine, this is like each one of us in our class went out to exactly one different classroom on campus. So I went out to classroom one, you went out to classroom two, uh, you know, the next person went out to classroom three, the next person went out to classroom four. And if we have 31 students in this class, then we collected 31 different classrooms where I'm assuming each classroom is filled with exactly M students. Each of us calculates our own sample mean. Now think to yourself, are all of these means going to be the same or different? And what I'm trying to convince you of right now is that all of our means across these 31 different classrooms will have different values. That's the idea of sampling variation. Point estimates, that is estimates of exact points in the population, like means or standard deviations or medians, are going to vary from sample to sample to sample. So in the world of R, let's see if we can help visualize or create in a program this idea. Now remember that we can generate some, let's say, three Bernoulli observations. 
So this is me flipping a fair coin three times. Okay, I observed tails, tails, heads in my three flips. Now here's what I'm gonna show you. We can replicate this experiment some 10 times. So this is like there are 10 friends who are each going to collect three flips of a fair coin. So this is, here is you, and you observe tails, heads, heads. And here's me, and I observed, because it's a different sample, heads, tails, tails. And then our friend, friend three, observed heads, 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 because it's a different sample. Friend four observed, oh, observed what you observed just by chance. Because the sample is only size three, that can happen. Friend five observed tails, 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 all the way up to friend 10, who observed tails, heads, heads. Now what we want to do to replicate what we were just talking about in handwritten notes is calculate the mean of each of these columns. We want to calculate the mean of each of these columns. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a data set named X's because X's are observations and we have many of them. So I'm going to call them X's. And then I'm going to use the function call means for calculate the means on the columns. They are column means. And indeed, Oh, look, because this is a new data set than the one printed above, these numbers and these means won't match exactly. The way you'd have to do it is print out X again. So now look, zero is indeed the mean of zero plus zero plus zero divided by three. 0.66 is indeed the mean of one plus one plus zero divided by three. 0.66 is the same mean of zero plus one plus one divided by three as this one, even though it came from a different sample. Okay, I encourage you to stop and play around with this R code to make sure that you understand this is the number of friends, this is the number of observations each friend is going to collect, this is the number of flips of your fair coin, and this is the number, this is the probability of success, which is defining the coin to be fair. I'm going to expand this example to show you why the normal distribution is so popular. Let's say, as a joke, I have 3,000, I have 1,001 friends, and each of my 1,001 friends is going to flip the coin, the fair coin, 35 times. We're going to get many mu hats by calculating the column means of xs. And indeed, look at the mu hats, each one of which is trying to estimate 0.5. You can see most of them are pretty close. Some of them get kind of far away, purely by chance. So we've got our 1,001 friends flipping a fair coin 35 times each. And then we're going to calculate the mean across all 1,001 friends. Now, what's crazy in the world of statistics is that we can make a plot by creating a data frame of the estimates themselves. And if we plot the estimates in a density plot, what we see is something that looks surprisingly normal. This is the magic of statistics. It is honest to God what keeps me employed as a statistician. I'm going to define this, why this works later on, but look how clever this is. You can start with Bernoulli's, something that are clearly not normal. And as long as you understand this idea of sampling variability, if you appropriately make a density plot of the many sample means, then you're going to get out a distribution that looks surprisingly normal. That is how this normal distribution shows up on the sample side.
Notice all of these are just 1,001 samples, each of size 35. If you take the mean of those, you have 1,001 sample means. And if you make a density plot of those sample means, we actually get out a distribution that looks surprisingly normal. This is how the normal distribution shows up on the sample side. 